Hey, what's up, Reefers? You guys have been asking for an update on the 150 gallon tank. Well, here it is, and it's gonna be long. So, since the beginning of this channel, the goal is not to create an instructional channel. My goal has always just to be documenting my journey as a reefer that is learning, going from beginners to the intermediate level. And maybe it's because the lack of experience, I'm not really quote unquote set in my way. So when somebody proposed something new, I thought, okay, well, you know, it makes sense. Why not? Let's try it. And this will be really apparent in this build. So guys, here it is. After a year and a half, here is 150 gallon tank. This tank is measured four foot by two foot by 31 inches. A lot of people say I'm gonna hate this dimension. I tend to agree. <laughs> Already I'm feeling the pain because when I reach down, I'll be getting a step ladder, I'll be getting a snorkel mask, I'll be dunking my face into the tank every time I wanna work on something at the bottom. But today let's take a look and see what we have done up to this point, shall we? The thing that took the longest is definitely the stand build. I started out knowing nothing about woodworking. So along the way, I got help from my coworkers, from a lot of people online, from local folks. I actually built two of these stands because of the first one, I braced it wrong. So I figured I'll redo it. Better safe than sorry. Some of the fun little innovation I did is the magnetic front cover. So these panels are being held by magnets. These are just like two little metal plate right here. And we got these cabinet magnets right there. And we got uh, three of these wire nails here, kind of just providing a little support so the magnet's not holding the whole weight, which is pretty heavy after all, all these layers of paint. So some people recommend using molding like this right here uh, for the bottom of the stand instead of uh, using these kind of wire nail. But uh, I figured this can kind of stay hidden and stay kind of slim, pretty modern look, and it's pretty easy to snail it and paint it, you're done. So let me go ahead and remove all these panels first. So that's one piece right here and we'll remove the side piece, these are all being held, held in by the uh, cabinet magnets, which works really well. And these I pretty much just, I was walking around Home Depot brainstorming, I saw them, I was like, okay, these are perfect. And turns out they worked out really well, even uh, with some paint over it. The primer first, and then I do a layer of black paint on the outside, I want white on the inside, so everything's nice and bright. And I use, a, I think it's called Poly New Firm or something like that, sorry, I can't pronounce it. But uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll leave in the comments, basically make the whole thing. Uh, waterproof and that's oh here check this out first look of inside the stand so as you can see inside I just used the uh, white primer as well also coated it with that same pony <laughs> I really should figure out how to pronounce this before filming but anyways everything underneath uh, the stand is waterproof and here also added a little uh, molding right here, make it nice and neat. And I actually used my miter saw to cut these guys and uh, use wood glue to glue them in. The reason is white underneath the stand is actually a great idea from uh, Mr. Telegram at Reef Sensei. Everything is white down here, just easier to see, easier to work versus like upstairs, it's like a, a bunch of weird color and just kind of dark. So this makes everything bright and it just looks cleaner. Now the sump is something I'm really excited about. I've actually held onto this as well as a skimmer for close to like half a year to a year already. You may notice the sump may be a little bit smaller compared to the size of tank. It's like 150 gallon of water and we got a, uh, this is a 30, 30 length uh, sump. I have the option to go for the 30 or 36, but I chose 30 because I want to run a um, external algae reactor, which we'll talk a little bit about later on in this video. Let's go over its plumbing first. Flashback. You guys asked for it. Here it is. My Reef Sensei, Jim is here to help me out. Plumb this tank, finally. B150, it's not vaporware, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> did a Home Depot run. Um, I bought some of the necessary parts and hopefully we'll be able to kind of put everything together. Jim has the ambitious plan of getting it filled today. I don't think that's gonna happen. Hose water. Shadow overflow. Excellent, excellent fit. Getting gasket in, inside and outside. Just saying that the primer kind of softens the PVC a little bit. Yep. And cleans up the non-existent dirt. And that's the PVC cement. I noticed some of them got the purple ones. I remember those are for inspection, right? Like yeah, the, okay. purple primer. So it's not necessary, they're all the same thing. Right. Basically. Purple primers for residential or commercial. So when an inspector comes in, they could say, yeah, there's primer on there. Man, this is also permanent. 
I think that's what scares me. Forever. Okay, so plumbing is one of the things that was uh, <laughs> really controversial for this tank right here. I've showed the uh, plumbing on two occasions on my Instagram and both times there's like a lot of feedback. It's uh, the comment section is on fire. I don't want to say there's backlash, but there's, there, there's backlash. And also there are a lot of really nice suggestions with reasonable backings. But let me go through what we have right now and the final decision and the reasoning we're doing it that way. First question a lot of people ask is that, hey, how come your overflow block is on the left hand side it's not in the back or anything like that so about two years ago our friend Mari sent me a couple videos or photos of a tank with shadow box in the back and that reminded me like years back I've seen reef tank or freshwater tank with a really nice color shadow box in the back with some shadow in the back just make the tank look so much deeper so ever since then I've always wanted to do shadow box so when I set out trying to design the 150 gallon tank I was like okay you know what I want to try the shadow box I want to do this I told Mari as well so I wanted to use the 45 gallon tank as a proof of concept and as you can see I have the um, background light on there and dude I love it and see Seems like a lot of you guys love it as well. So I, that is actually a predecessor for this 150. Like 150 starting off, one of the main thing I want to do is a shadow box in the back. And that's why I make sure the background has been clear. And that's also make sure I, I want to make sure that I have a pretty tall tank. So it's not just like a low tank where everything's blocked. You can't see anything. I want something tall. I want something clear in the back. So that's the reason why our overflows on one side, returns on one side versus kind of in the back right, to make sure the back is clear, ready for a background light. Now let's go over the uh, plumbing. Let's start from the drain first, right? So for the drain, we got the Synergy Reef um, Shadow Overflow. Honestly, starting out, I really don't know much about plumbing, but just upon um, kind of like research online, it seems like a lot of people like it. Um, and here, let's go over the controversial parts. <laughs> so the Shadow Overflow has three pipes right here. We got a main drain right here. We got a secondary drain right here, and we got an emergency drain right here. Now coming down here is where it gets a little controversial. Up to this point is okay. Up to this point is okay. But once you look down here, it's like, oh, what? How come you're tying these two pipes together? Typically for a reef tank like this, right? For like a bean animal setup. If you see three drains like this, three pipes should go into the sump. Um, otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose. Well, it defeats the purpose of a emergency drain. Um, because if you think about it, it makes sense. Like what if uh, something get clocked right here, right down this drain. So basically your emergency line is done. Your secondary line is done. Um, you kind of screwed. So basically you only have one backup. So the bottom line is this, if you're just looking at the plumbing, right? If it's plumbed this way, I essentially cut the um, backup fail safe by 50% because, okay, this is the secondary drain, this emergency drain. If something clogged in secondary, okay, things are still fine. Things will go down here. Now, if something clogged down here, I'm kind of out of luck, right? So that's why I say I basically cut the uh, fail safe down by 50%. This is exactly why a lot of people did not like this plumbing setup um, when I first showed this on Instagram. We were saying like, okay, what's the point of this? Why do you even have like three different drains? You could just use, go by two. Now to be completely honest, they are not wrong. Um, at some point after this setup, I thought, okay, you know, I mean, why not? It makes sense, right? Three drains, three pipes, standard. There's a reason why it's standard. And since I have a overflow box that has three drains, let's just make it three pipes. And then I talked a little bit more with my Reef Sensei uh, Telegram and he provided some solution that also makes sense. So even in this kind of configuration, it works. And also he pointed out the fact that how likely would this drain be clogged? Because let me flip this around. If you look here, for the water to enter the overflow box, they have to go through this weir first, right? These are really fine grits. And once you get here, another thing we could do is also have mesh over here to be extra, extra safe. Like somebody just open the thing and toss things in here. Maybe you can even have mesh like uh, under, the, under the U or on top of the emergency to make sure nothing goes in here. But the likelihood of something entering the pipe, especially one of these two, and then clock right in here, it's almost, but, you know what, just in case, just in case he offer a solution that I thought is brilliant. What he proposed we can do is actually a water level sensor that could measure 
the, how high the water is in the display tank, meaning that once the water overflows to a certain level, it triggers the sensor, it will just shut off the return pump. So if you think about this, what are we trying to achieve here with multiple pipes? Basically, we want to make sure that the tank does not overflow. That is a goal and we are trying to find a solution. So far, the solution is, okay, how do we go over the obstacle? Meaning that if one, one pipe plugs up, we go to the second one. Second one plugs up, we go to the third one. What if we can just shut off the pump when to detect there's a problem instead? So I feel like this is a different way of tackling the same problem. Now granted, the downside is that uh, by shutting off the return pump, you have to fix the problem quickly uh, to make sure everything is back in order versus if you have an emergency pipe, things can still be running. Um, however, I do still feel like this is a valid solution. And come on, to be, what the heck? What is that? What is that? <laughs> I'm just here on a roll, on a rampage, you know, just like blah, 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 blah. And then I saw something like crawling on the ground over there. I'm like, okay, anyways, the married life. One hour later. Bottom line is we have a fail safe and then we have another fail safe that I feel pretty comfortable with uh, in terms of um, going that route. Now, if you ask me, is it really that bad to just add one more pipe so that everything is kind of standard, kind of works? We could absolutely do that, but I'll tell you why we did not do it. Um, I, I believe, at least for my part, a large part of it is like stubbornness and pride because I feel like, okay, you know what? Is that really the only way to do it? Yeah, maybe it's the best way for a good reason why people, everybody do it that way, but uh, may, it could be fun to explore something different as well. But I do believe there's a little element of um, kind of just stubbornness. Be like, oh, we did it this way, it's gonna work. Unless, I'm sure, like, we think for everything it should work. I feel like piping like this fits the spirit of this system, which is highly experimental. So when my Reef Sensei Telegram, who I trust wholeheartedly, suggested piping like this, I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, especially if it's kind of going against the norm a little bit. Why not? This is an experimental system. Um, he got the skills, he got the knowledge, everything is sound, we have a backup and we have a backup to a backup. Let's just go for it and see where it takes us. And that kind of brings me back to my point that this channel, again, is not the best practice. It's more of what I'm doing as a reefer um, and just showing you this is what I want to try. So let's give it a try. Maybe the next video is like, oh man, my plumbing got stuck and my basement got flooded. Hopefully I don't have to make that video. Knock on wood somewhere. If you're watching this right now, not an instructional video. <laughs> this is a documentary of what I'm doing right now. Oh man, that was a long explanation, but I feel like this is the most controversial portion of this tank. So I want to spend some time to kind of explain how it came about and the thought process. Um, let's keep going, let's keep going. So as you can see, all these pipes are black. So I spray paint them with the Krylon Fusion all-in-one matte black paint. Um, love this paint. Use this on the 45 gallon tank, uh, the overflow pipes as well, and they're 100% submerged 24 seven for the last five years. No issue at all. Same thing as what I read online. So as long as you let these paint cure for seven days, I think it's good to go. Um, completely reef safe. So looking here one more time, this is the main drain. This is the uh, secondary and this is emergency. We'll kind of come all the way down here. And in the back, we have one gate valve on the main pipe right here for emergency shut off and fine tune the flow. One question Jim Telegram on Instagram raised is also that if we have a DC pump, do we still really need a gate valve? Um, I kind of look into it a little bit. Because of the DC pump, you can now control how much flow goes through this and you can kind of control like uh, the, the rate of return. But online, a lot of people are also saying that, okay, even with a DC pump, things is just a little bit easier with the gate valve. So hey, why not right here? And right here, this, this line is the secondary as well as emergency and they both goes into the, uh, the sump right here. So what happens inside the sump, I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, but I'm gonna rely heavily on biological filtration. I plan to have uh, quite a few pieces of those like bio blocks. I use the marine pure spheres as well as the marine pure blocks. So I plan to have some here, maybe have some here, and possibly some here as well. The marine pure blocks or equivalents is only as effective as water is flowing through them. So I'll be kind of taking a peek at this sump and see uh, uh, how the water flow situation is. Speaking of this sum, this sum came from Fiji Cube. 
They make fantastic, fantastic products. Um, they're not a really well-known company simply because they're really small. I met them at Reefapalooza two years ago and we've been keeping in touch ever since. And uh, just based on their reputation online and uh, all the stuff that I see that they create, I have a lot of faith in the product that they produce. And after receiving this sump, I knew that I made the right choice. Just look at the worksmanship of this sum. It's just beautiful acrylic work. There's a lot of modular pieces that I'm gonna mess around with um, once things are getting close to up and running. It actually came with a lot of attachment. I also have like all these cutouts that I can just uh, cover up. But we'll talk a little bit more about it once we start getting things uh, set up for the sump portion. For the skimmer, we have the Vertex Omega I-180 that I held on for, I think it's close to two years now, it's ridiculous. But this is uh, another fantastic skimmer, tried and true. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about the skimmer too as things get going. So return pump, at the moment I have a Coral Box return pump plant. Uh, down the road, I may change it up to a Ecotech uh, Vetra, maybe Vetra, do you think an S2 or M2? Uh, maybe M2, um, just so that all the equipment is on um, the Mobius uh, platform for Ecotech. But for now, I think the Coral Box uh, return pump will do nicely in this setup. We got this braided hose going up here and it connects to this T and on one end, we got a future manifold that we can expand, uh, which may come in handy uh, because I'm thinking already thinking about the uh, external LG reactor. Um, by the way, I am looking for a LG reactor. I'm probably not gonna do a DIY one because I want something that looks uh, nice and polished that can fit like right here. So if you have any recommendations on a nice external uh, macro LG reactor, please let me know. But with that said though, so it could I could potentially teed off um, one of the manifolds and run the LG reactor. Or if the LG reactor has its own pump, that's even better. I'll just hook it up to a sum and we're good to go. On the return pump, we'll go off the manifold on one end and the other end will come back up to the return. And like the other side, I painted this black. And let's see. And we made sure the pipe kind of followed the corner. So when you look over the front, you can't really see it running up the side. And I'm running outside, we kind of drilled it through here and we got a lock line and we may kind of point it up a little bit. Not sure what we're gonna do with the return yet, but we do have this guy right here. Um, I'm thinking about putting on the random flow generator as well on that end and maybe the uh, MP40 on that side to provide flow. And then maybe a small MP10 on there. I don't know, flow we're still kind of playing with. Um, I have some ideas, we'll, we'll get there later on. All right, so as you can see, the 150 gallon is coming along really quickly and I think it's actually ready for water any day now. Um, I just need to final, what else I need to finalize? Now it's ready for water. I think the next time I actually make a video of this tank is probably with water in the tank already, which is kind of scary because this is quite a commitment. The remaining thing I really want to nail down first before I fill this tank is the distance. I want the tank to be away from the wall because I want a decent amount of room back here that I can walk back here and do some work. And also remember, I talked about having a backlight. So the backlight needs a little room away from the tank first to, in order for it to be really effective. I think at least as much. Yeah, I want I want myself to be able to like, just kind of come in here comfortably without having to like uh, shimmer in here. That's pretty much it, to be honest. <laughs> I think next time you see this tank, It'll be full of water. I know I kind of joked that this tank will be up and running by 2020. Um, I think we could beat that. If you were doing Christmas, what do you guys think? Or maybe even earlier? I have some pretty ambitious plan for this tank. Uh, as you know, like this tank is my experimental tank. This, this is gonna be a fun tank. And I have some really crazy ideas on par as my drop off tank GSP bottom. This tank is gonna be pretty insane. I'm really excited for it. It's gonna take a little time but I think the result will totally be worth it. Um, I do not really like conventional stuff, if you cannot tell already, uh, with the plumbing. So we'll be trying some new ideas with this tank in terms of uh, livestock, aquascape, and equipment as well. I'm excited, a little scared. Cannot wait to share the journey with you guys. Once again, huge, huge, huge thanks to my Reef Sensei, Jim, Telegram on Instagram. I could not have done any of this 
without his help. So if you follow him on Instagram, you know that he got some GHL equipment recently. So he'll be doing some interesting stuff with the GHL gear as well as continue to do a lot of DIY stuff. So if you're not following him on YouTube or Instagram, be sure to check him out. Telegram on Instagram as well as Telegram on YouTube. All right, this has turned out to be a really long video and a lot of talking head. I apologize. I promise you the next video will be a lot more exciting. So stay put. I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. shop. Bye. Be free, my child!